Let me tell you a story about the time I got canceled by my entire high school. As I'm filming this, I don't know what number to say because we keep going up, but I'm just gonna say thank you for 5,000 subscribers. Uh, it took me a year each to hit 1,000 and 2,000, and in two weeks, I nearly doubled that. <laughs> I cannot express how much this means to me. Thank you. I hope you continue to stick around. It was a huge explosion I wasn't expecting, which coincidentally fits with the movie we're going to cover today. Read and Weep is a 2006 Disney Channel original movie starring Kate Panabaker as Jamie, a high school freshman who becomes a bestseller after she accidentally submits her journal instead of her homework. Spoiler alert, sorry. Which gives this movie one of the most insane plots ever made. Also, this film has some of the most insane hyper editing I've ever seen, at least in a Disney Channel TV movie. It's like if I had the chance to edit a feature length film. <laughs> I remember when I was looking up to see if anyone else covered it, I saw one other video that said, the worst editing of any Disney Channel movie? Come on, it's beautiful. Let a professional editor tell you this is the best editing ever put to film. So with all that exposition out of the way, let's get to Read It and Weep, the Disney Channel movie where she gets canceled. We open up on our main character, Jamie, sharpening a pencil just to write on her computer. Jamie is writing in her journal about how much high school sucks. Even though she's a freshman and it's implied they've only been through half a year. You're being a little over dramatic, come on. In her journal, she writes about her cool alter ego, Iz, who is first seen walking down the hallway in the most 2000s outfit ever made. Also, I just gotta ask, what writing program is this? Oh my God. Because the space bar is apparently the letter E, which is not seen anywhere in the word with. It is here where destiny finds the incomparable is. She's incomparable, all right. In her never-ending battle for truth, justice, and gym class. The way that sentence was structured makes it sound like she battles for gym class. Come on, guys, it's not that bad. Let's go run the mile. She is climbs to the top of the rope, rings the bell, and then falls to her death. Just kidding, she lands in Marco's arms, who is Jamie's IRL love interest. Jamie gets snapped out of her journal and has to do the rope herself, leading to this. I don't like Jamie's bones on this rope. Uh. So the bell rings while Jamie's halfway up the rope, which is not enough time for them to change out of their gym clothes and get back to their next class, which is probably why Jamie is bumping into every person to ever exist. She literally targets this one girl. <laughs> <laughs> With the amount of time the bells ring in this movie, I've come to the conclusion that they have 45 second periods. Oh, let's bounce. We can't be late for English. Well, the bell rang. You're already late. A actually, every person at this high school is going to be late. Everyone is just still casually walking. <laughs> so our friends Harmony and Lindsay are high school activists. And Lindsay is constantly fighting for justice in the world, so hard to the point that she keeps switching her accent between Wisconsin and country in this one line. Isn't that a little ambitious before lunch? The planet is a theater downtown and they're gonna tear it down unless we do something about it. This poster looks like she dropped it. <laughs> Anyways, the bullies come into frame by doing this insane witch ritual and no one can believe it. Not even this guy who looks right into the camera. This is an insane one-two punch of a frame. She entered the hallway with her clone horrific cohort. So the bullies who are all 27 yell at Jamie to go away. So when Jamie goes to her home, she writes about how much she wants to fucking kill them. Sorry, I mean, zap them, zap them. That's important to the plot. In their English class, Marco reads a poem that's so obviously pointed at Jamie, it's littered with foreshadowing. And after Marco finishes his one poem that's like four lines long, oh. Jamie moans and the bell rings. <laughs> Miss Gallagher brings up that the essays for the writing competitions are due Monday, and we cut to them working at Jamie's dad's pizza shack. Ralph's pizza shack is gonna go under because Ralph is hell-bent on trying to find his next big pizza. And of course he starts with liver and onion, a pizza this group loves so much that they run away before Jamie can even get near them. Smile, only two hours until closing. Yes, but three and a half more years of high school. <laughs> If you needed to summarize this movie in one scene, I think that could do it for you. <laughs> so Jamie, Lindsay, and Harmony are watching a soap opera on TV while Jamie is trying to submit her essay to Lindsay to print. However, she's so distracted by the TV, she accidentally sends her journal to Lindsay instead. <gasps> <laughs> so a month passes and the winner of the essay competition is announced, to which Lindsay is way too excited for, which leads to this dialogue. Oh, come on, you must be excited. You practically wrote a novel. What are you talking about? It was five pages. With footnotes. Uh-oh. <laughs> So it's revealed that Jamie has won the competition, and we find out through this frankly insane transition. Jamie has won the contest. Jamie won the contest. No! <laughs> like, it looks like this. No! So every single person who goes to the school, except for the main characters, reads the school's newspaper. This school is single-handedly gonna keep the newspaper industry alive. Next time Rachel calls me a cow, I'm gonna zap her. 
I hate to burst your bubble, but I think trying to zap the bullies into perpetual detention is only going to make the bullying worse. So Jamie's mom peer pressures her daughter into publishing even more of her journal into the world. Since the Education Times read this ninth grader's book and thought it was the best thing they've ever read, this scene also has some of the most insane conversation editing I've ever seen because it manages to break the 180 degree rule in every single cut. This also introduces Jamie's main conflict with Iz because she starts talking to her out loud. But we can tell that Iz is only a figment of Jamie's imagination, meaning that she's an imaginary friend, which we will come back to discuss how insane this is later. So two months later, Jamie speed runs the publishing process and becomes a national bestseller with her book, Is Saves the World. Also like how every single person on earth was reading the paper, every single person ever invented is aggressively reading her book. So business is absolutely booming at Ralph's Pizza Shack because it's featured in Jamie's book, which is like if Iz just randomly said in the middle of her book, man, I love eating at Papa John's Pizza, located at 1737 Groucher Street, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So Marco admits to Jamie that he read her book and liked it. This leads to the girls squealing and Connor getting cucked. <laughs> so Jamie admits to her friends that the evil Myrna is based off of Sawyer and the bullies, to which her friends are completely shocked, even though they knew Marco was based on Marco. Which, to be fair, she did name him Marco. She's not that creative. You are Laura the Invincible, and you are the Magnificent Melody. But they're only the coolest kids in the kingdom. Yeah, it's mostly fiction. Jamie's the meanest person in the world. If I hated Jamie, I'd give her a strike. So because business is booming, Peggy, Jamie's mother, hires Connor and Lindsay on the spot. The job market was so much easier back then. Honestly, the first 20 minutes of this film could have been its own short. It literally wraps up a good chunk of the plot lines. Everyone's happy. Business is booming. The standard yeah, Disney Channel ending the credit the song is playing. They could literally end the movie here, but like BoJack Horseman with a second interview, they decide to keep on going. In this scene, they take a break from the chaotic editing and do a well choreographed one take scene where they all agree to go to the prom together. It's well done. Good job. So later, Jamie gets Harmony and Lindsay to join the dance committee, which will be important later. So while Iz is shown in yet another terrible outfit, the dad from Even Stevens walks in in the best ever fit. I want the embroidered tomato hat now. I will say that Ralph is incredible in this movie. He is so over the top yet completely natural in this weird world. He's the perfect dad. Also, I want his embroidered tomato hat. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. So Connor, who is 15, is begging his 40 year old brother to drive him to the dance. His brother agrees, but Connor has to do all his chores. So Jamie is currently packing for the press tour she's gonna go on while Lenny is playing four guitar chords and Lindsay is all for it, especially when Lenny messes up. Lenny sounds pretty good. She's really good. They're totally not doing a high school musical where they're teasing the final song. No, there's not a final song here. Next line. So we then get a transition with some of the most beautiful royalty-free music we've ever heard as we watch Jamie get her photos taken and she makes this face. <laughs> You have to try to make this expression. So her first interview goes super well as she has a stroke live on camera in response to the simplest question. Let's talk about Disney character. Tell me about her. What do you like? Oh, yeah. uh, well, okay. And what's her final response when her spirit friend gives her the confidence to answer what is is like? She responds with this. Yeah. <laughs> That does not answer her question. I changed my mind. This song is horrible. <laughs> Love me way back and finding where it's at. Love is a beautiful thing. And it's so horrible that it almost distracted me from noticing when Jamie's doing a press tour appearance in New York that is a location that's applied to be later at their high school. Everyone is cheering for Jamie like she's JK Rowling before she installed Twitter. I don't even know what else to write about this scene other than, oh yeah! Oh, right. But also, Ralph steals the show yet again with how passionately he delivers this line. So Jamie's at an after party and Iz tells her to go talk to people and because she's so socially awkward, she goes to talk to a dog and somehow this happens. Puffy! Oh, ow, 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 This could only happen to me. <laughs> and this is how the scene ends. So Jamie's driving the limo talking to her friends and Harmony and Lindsay let Jamie know that Sawyer and Marco broke up. But they were so good for each other. <laughs> and as Connor finally gets the phone to talk to Jamie, he gets cock blocked by Jamie's handler yet again. Friend zoned again. <laughs> Later, Jamie promises to go to Lindsay and Harmony's animal rights activist rally that's held at the same place Jamie had that book tour appearance in New York. So Jamie and the gang are walking to lunch and Marco bumps into Jamie and this happens. Sorry, that is so nice that you're doing this for.
Everyone is so shocked that even these people in the back pause walking. The Sawyer invites Jamie to sit with them as Jennifer too is out sick, which also hilarious name. Gotta give the movie credit. And this is when the biting hate I have for Jamie begins. Even though Sawyer has been nothing but a prick to Jamie in every facet of life, Jamie agrees to sit with Sawyer and the bullies at lunch and tell her all about her stories. Jamie, you're already popular. You don't need her. So this is strike one against Jamie. Yeah, I'm starting to count the strikes. Harmony asks if Marco will take Jamie to the dance and Connor gets insanely defensive. Spoiler alert, he might have a crush on Jamie. Ooh. So Connor stares at a sandwich as he internalizes this. As Jamie, Harmony, and Lindsay are walking home from school, Jamie suddenly dumps that she quit working at the pizza place as they're walking to the pizza place. Dick move. <laughs> and Jamie is surprised that neither of them knew about this because... I thought my handler called you guys. Strike two. So the vibe of the pizza place is all off, especially because someone decided to give a tip of four pennies. So Jamie pulls a mommy blog on Pinterest when Lindsay answers the phone. Exhausting. Who knew pizzas could be so heavy? You think you're tired? You'd never believe all the stuff I've got going on. You think you're busy? Try answering fan mail. Ugh. Also, this is strike three. I'm starting to slowly root against her. <laughs> so Jamie goes Lindsay on her animals right protest because Sawyer calls her to ask if she wants to go to the mall Saturday. And she agrees because she's, quote, high school royalty. You don't need her. Strike four. <laughs> so Jamie's walking with Peggy and their handler. And Jamie sees her real friends and Sawyer are both miraculously at this food place together. And Jamie, being the worst, says that she's not hungry anymore. Strike five. I hate her. <laughs> Connor keeps trying to call Jamie and ask her to the dance, but Jamie keeps ghosting him in literally every capacity. So when Connor finally sees Jamie in person at school, he sees Marco going to ask her to the dance instead. Connor tries to stop Marco from asking her to the dance by killing everyone in his path. Ah! He's too late. And this little Jamie? stunt from Jamie earns her strike six for 10. So Lindsay and Harmony are disgusted by Jamie because she completely forgot about their animals right protest. And she has the audacity to ask them to try to change a date that has been set in stone for three months. This is the worst as she's currently trying to get Jamie to turn on her friends and give in to stardom. Maybe I don't want to be a superstar. I don't want to be a superstar. I love pizza. Cool, I think Iz is getting worse. So no one besides Harmony and Lindsay showed up to the rally that has been planned for three months, which makes sense. It's held in New York, a different state. <laughs> so here comes Jamie's downfall and I've been praying on it. Jamie's on Rise and Shine and she starts slipping up and revealing the actual details about what she wrote. And someone starts panting behind the camera. Right, you've sold a lot of books. So Jamie is an idiot and admits that her book is based on real life and her high school has a giant TV that's just playing the interview live. What school has this budget? <laughs> parents have pointed out that is is no more than an alter ego of myself. But, but she isn't. Am I is? Is isn't. Is she? Am I is? Jamie has an existential crisis live on television. Jamie accidentally reveals that Myrna is based off a of Sawyer and this one slip up causes the entire town to hate Jamie. And I'm here for it. Get out your pitchforks. We're crucifying Jamie tonight. So Jamie gets confronted by the entire school because they're so loyal to Sawyer who I thought everyone hated. And Sawyer gets everyone to hate Jamie because she wrote about everyone in the school somehow. Dude, I went to high school with like a thousand people and I could maybe name 200 of them. God, I can't wait for my high school reunion if this video blows up and just have people in my face going, was I one of those 200 people? <laughs> I'm just gonna say yes. <laughs> so Iz and Jamie have a fight, which leads me to bring up something I've been holding on to and I wanted to build into. So Iz is completely a figment of Jamie's imagination and has been slowly taking over Jamie's life, ruining her friendships, telling her how to act, how to dress, so on and so on. And later in the film, it's gonna get worse because when she talks to Iz, she's really just talking to herself. And at least three characters in this film ask her who the hell she's talking to. Well, I'm sorry if my music is interrupting you talking to yourself. So this led me down a rabbit hole of fact checking and Googling. And with all the evidence this film provides, you can make a legitimate case that Jamie has schizophrenia. <laughs> It's just not addressed. <laughs> and a claim like this is not valid enough to make on my own and just doing some cursory research. So I contacted a real actual doctor. So with all the symptoms I just listed off, would that constitute a schizophrenia? Well, I heard you talk the other night about schizophrenia and that's uh, sometimes just something that I have to have to schizophrenia. Okay, that was very detailed. Um, but would you say Jamie has schizophrenia? <laughs> Well, Jamie is. I don't know Jamie. <laughs> the friend is invisible, doesn't exist, and is basically controlling her life. And I just want to get confirmation. Would you be able to say that, like, that person has schizophrenia? I would say that they could have. And they also could have anxiety. So, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs>
<laughs> anytime. Like Grandpa, would you like to say anything to my audience? Well, I hope that they give you a good grade for a presentation. Okay. All right, guys, make sure that you give me an A plus on this video. Otherwise, you'll disappoint my grandpa. You uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Thank you, grandpa. And if you have a problem with my theory, you have a problem with my grandpa. And that would be sad. <laughs> so after the boldest claim of my entire life, Lenny does his best Cleveland impression. No, 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 no. You call that noise music? Why don't you do us both a favor and give it up? So everyone still hates Jamie, and it's evident because everyone in the school is reading the newspaper, and I don't think anyone at my high school read the newspaper the entire time we were there. I don't feel like to point out that the prop department went above and beyond in this movie because they wrote actual legitimate letters to the editor instead of just writing lorem ipsum. They put all this effort for something that no one is really going to get to read, and I really respect that. So even though I'm clowning on this movie, this is easily one of the most cared for Disney movies, at least from a production standpoint. It's really admirable. I'd also like to point out that they use the same three letters for different students, and I think that's a great visual joke even though they didn't intend for it. Everyone was like, God, I really hope someone writes something original. <laughs> so Marco steals Connor's assigned seat and asks him if it's chill. I'd also like to point out that they legitimately have 45 second periods because the bell rings at 55 minutes and 25 seconds and then it rings at 56 minutes and 13 seconds. Oh, but that's like 46. Shut up. <laughs> so Jamie has the audacity to run up and beg for her old friends to give her, quote, positive PR and they rightfully ditch her ass. Lindsay and Harmony roast her and Connor has the best sentence to leave her on. Connor? It's the middle of the school day. <laughs> so no one came to the Ralph's Pizza Shack book signing because this local incident offended everyone in the city. And apparently even her national fans didn't even come to see her. Like you think with how insanely hard her book blew up, there'd be at least like five different people who were still writing for Jamie as hard as someone like a Kanye stand would. So Harmony and Lindsay are building this giant whale for the dance. And Lindsay said that she found something that will be quote provocative, which involves filling the whale with the entire trash cans worth of Seaweed? Where on earth did she get this ludicrous amount of seaweed? So Jamie is walking down the street and arguing with Iz, and this is just proving my theory because she says this. Nobody wants to eat with a tattletale. They're all afraid of you. No, they're afraid of you. Me. I'm just a figment of your imagination. I'm just saying that, Pat, if you need a film theorist, uh, you're looking at <laughs> We also see that Jamie is the worst because Lenny gave up on music because she yelled at him to give it up, so he did. We then cut to a sad montage of Jamie sulking as we hear a song that sounds like it could have made it to the Camp Rock 2 soundtrack. Outside the crowd, you don't know what it's like to be left also, the funniest thing happens in this scene when Jamie opens up her computer and sees that all her friends are unfriending her at the same exact time. <laughs> This is targeted. So Connor's the only one to have second thoughts about the targeted attack on Jamie. And Jamie messages her, don't you hate me too? Unfriend me. And Connor messages her that he doesn't hate her. He hates what she became. And Jamie writes that she hates it too. So Connor writes the only positive letter for the editor so far. Also, I don't want to minimize anyone's feelings at this school, but also it's been like two weeks and you guys are all still writing letters about how much you hate Jamie to the paper to the point that it's five pages long. The staff should really put a stop to this, but I think at this point they're just making up students to shit on Jamie. <laughs> Iz points out that there was one positive letter, which he had to possess a student to do. Jamie starts reading the positive letter out loud. Okay, so everyone hates her so much to the point that they'll write hate mail in droves to the school's newspaper, but no one has the balls to shush her? Come on, be consistent. Jamie runs into Connor and reads the positive letter to him, and then this poor thing happens. Did you see this? See it. At least Marco thinks I'm pretty special. Huh? Oh no. <laughs> Jamie tells Marco that what he did was really sweet and because he didn't do it, he just plays along with it. And Jamie says this. It's just nice to know that in the face of all this negativity towards me, however unwarranted and mean it really is. So Jamie walks in on her parents crunching the numbers and realizing they're gonna have to sell the pizza shack. And it's really implied that Jamie is not giving any of the profits that she's making to her parents to keep the pizza shack afloat. But that doesn't matter. We get another terrible music montage. <laughs> This is literally just Disney's BoJack Horseman, so we finally get to the deep blue sea dance and everyone's vibing. The three guitarists are all terrifyingly facing the drummer instead of the audience. The band goes, all right, take a quick break. Thank you very much. First off, no one on stage says this. Second off, they keep playing nothing. Third, they're still on stage and people start slow dancing like they keep playing. <laughs> also, even if they took a break, there'd still be like some ambient music in the background, right? There's nothing. <laughs> so Jamie and Marco are having a heart to heart and Jamie calls him a beautiful writer. And Marco reveals that he didn't write the poem in English class and actually paid that dork Connor to do the assignment, to which Jamie has her mind blown. Calm down. 
just homework, right? I help you with yours. It's the principal. What does the principal have to do with this? <laughs> this movie has some jokes. Will you please just shut up and dance with him? But he's not the one that I should be dancing with. Who are you talking to? Also, this is just proving my theory. You with me now. So Mrs. Gallagher calls out Jamie and praises her for being such a help to the school, to which everybody boos. <laughs> Jamie comes up reluctantly and tries giving a speech. <laughs> she didn't say anything. <laughs> All right, guys, be prepared for the number to break. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Gallagher, for those kind words. After the week I've had, it's nice to be appreciated. Keep going. Have I mentioned my sequel? Not another one. <laughs> That's so mean. So Jamie calls out Harmony and Lindsay as they're about to pull the rope on the whale to make it drop seaweed. Jamie proceeds to apologize to everyone at the dance. She even says that her brother is talented and then proceeds to not even apply the word music. And Jamie brings up Harmony and Lindsay instead to give them the credit they deserve. Everyone forgives Jamie except for me. She's still the worst. So Jamie pulls the whale rope and seaweed comically falls over every single person on this dance. This is just G-rated carry. It's a miracle that no one dies when the whale literally falls and swings. <laughs> <laughs> so Lindsay, Harmony, and Jamie make up, and Jamie runs outside and apologizes to Connor for everything, which just amounts to her being like, my bad. They make up and make kiss. <laughs> Connor and Jamie walk back into the dance, and everyone just starts clapping for Jamie for no reason. We hated you a minute ago, but ever since you dropped seaweed on us, you've really turned a new leaf. She said, I'm sorry, and then threw seaweed all over them. That's objectively worse than having a character based off you in a story. <laughs> also, I gotta say that the story of this movie ends so abruptly, it then shifts into to a giant music video where Lenny performs a song that's been teased, I Will Be Around, and then everyone just forgets the seaweed incident and dances. This movie actually ends with Ralph and Peggy closing the pizza shop, and luckily Jamie times it perfectly to where she invites the entire school to the pizza joint. I think it'd be funny if it just cut to Ralph being like, Jamie, what the hell? We stole the pizza oven. What do you think we're gonna do? Lenny accidentally throws seaweed on the pizza and they serve it. And they're supposed to demonstrate that everyone loves the seaweed pizza, but not one single person in this movie took a bite of seaweed. <laughs> and they love the pizza so much that the movie ends with everyone chanting, pizza, 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 pizza. <laughs> we also see Iz is covered in soapy bubbles, so we don't get any resolution with her character or what's gonna happen with Iz. And then we get the actual last shot of the movie. You say this movie is the definition of the 2000s. Read It and Weep is a weird, infuriating movie, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't love watching this so much. It's so insanely stylized. The chemistry between the main four, despite how much I hate Jamie at times, is really good. And it seems like everyone who was involved in this movie loved it too. The editing, the prop department, the insane outfits, everything about this movie screams 2000s and I'm here for it. If you didn't see my Derby Stallion review, I'm doing this new thing where I start tier listing my enjoyment of everything I cover. I enjoy everything I cover, otherwise I wouldn't cover it, but D is for stuff that was a slog to get through, while S is reserved for ironic masterpieces. Now, where does Read It and Weep sit? This is easily gonna be an A tier for everything I said. I loved hate watching this because of how much Jamie sucks at times, but I also loved reading into the production of this movie and finding that everyone really loved working on it. And also, it is just such a fun movie to watch. I've seen this movie three times now, and I've loved it every single time. Kate Panabaker, who has since retired from acting, good for her, said that this was her favorite role to do. She goes from a completely likable character to the worst and then gets redeemed. So unlike the Derby Stallion, this is way easier to get your hands on, and I recommend giving it a watch. It it is genuinely a fun, cheesy movie that I really loved covering. And for that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to help me on my quest to go from underrated to just rated. And don't forget to politely press that like button as it's been obliterated too many times. There'll be some videos that pop up around my head because if you like this video, you'll certainly like those. I hope you have a good day. And here's a little secret for those who have stuck around. I have a new song coming up May 27th. The pre-save comes out in a week. More details about that later. You can join my Discord to find out more. But until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.